in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Go ahead and pray, declare, decree by the Spirit of God. I trample upon the enemy. Glory be to God. Take a minute to just pray in the Spirit as you receive. Victorious, ever victorious. A living miracle. Shabalako sabranda paratos kapreski balandosi. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Through my life, glory be to God. Through my hands, glory be to God. Through His wisdom as work in my life, glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, give me an encounter once again, even tonight. Someone is praying. Give me a life-transforming encounter by your spirit. Someone is praying. Give me a life-transforming encounter even by your spirit. A life-transforming encounter that takes me higher in the spirit, that imparts upon me greater wisdom, greater power, courage to face destiny, the grace to excel, bringing glory to the King through my life, In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, bless us tonight in the name of Jesus. Change someone's life tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift someone in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Answer someone's prayer in the name of Jesus. Wipe someone's tears in the name of Jesus. Roll shame away from someone in the name of Jesus birth a testimony in someone's life in the name of Jesus answer someone's enemies tonight in the name of Jesus cause laughter to spring out from someone's destiny in the name of Jesus and to you be all the glory for in Jesus mighty name we pray walk up to two or three people and bless them from the depth of your heart tell them the Lord bless you and then you be seated. Make sure there are at least two or three. Two or three people, the Lord bless you, and then you may be seated. Hallelujah. Good evening to everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you. This is Koinonia. God is set to change your life again. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, let me start by tendering my kind apologies for the uh, glitch in the light and sound that happened earlier on. My sincere apologies and we thank all our people who worked tirelessly to make this, um, to just allow us have the light and power restored let's give them a big god bless you 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And then to thank our very own Reverend Akila and his dear wife. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Always an honor having you in our presence. Everyone who is worshiping with us, visiting us for the first time, may God bless you and may he do you good tonight in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to receive? It's important that your hunger for the word never goes down. It is an attack when your hunger for the word goes down. The reason is because the victory of the believer in this kingdom depends on knowledge and understanding. The victory of the believer in this kingdom does not just depend on time. It does not just depend on the sentiments of men. It depends on knowledge and understanding. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Excelling in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. Excelling in this kingdom, that means every area, as far as your life and your destiny is concerned, is knowledge dependent. When knowledge comes, the potential for excellence comes. When knowledge comes, the potential for representing God at a higher level comes. You are at the mercy of the knowledge you know and your life is at risk if you do not know. And we are here not because we are ignorant. We are here because we know that there is a standard of knowledge that every believer must attain unto. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, the Bible says that he knoweth not as he ought to know. As he ought to know. As he ought to know. There is a standard. I have challenged us that knowing a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there, just produces awareness. But it does not translate to dominion. Dominion in the kingdom is a function of high level spiritual illumination. Dominion in the kingdom in any area of your kingdom life is a function of high level spiritual illumination. High level spiritual illumination. If we put up the light in this beautiful auditorium, even if you have the light from your phone, it is light, but not light enough to overpower the darkness within this room. And if all of us would be at the mercy of that little light, then you put us at a risk. But when we are flooded with light, then you are able to see. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you tonight that that which you will be learning will shift you higher in the spirit, take you closer to your destiny, are there believers in this place tonight? In the name of Jesus Christ. As always, my commitment to you is to make sure that the word of God comes to you in season, building you, empowering you by the spirit. Because the word of God not only sanctifies, it builds. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God first then to the word of his grace, the Bible says, which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He says, and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, they, the Bible says, my people are destroyed. My people, my people, my children, my inheritance, but they are still destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. You cannot reject what was not offered. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let your heart be open. I'm saying this to charge you so that number one, you will always learn to tremble at his word. There are spirits that distract people at the point the word is taught. Remember the parable of the sower? The seed is the word. And when the farmer began to plant, the Bible says those that represented bad soils were those who heard and they didn't tremble at the word. They didn't even understand, nor were they passionate 
in receiving the word and making it work for them. It is your responsibility to receive the word and engage it by faith so that it produces for you. May that be your testimony tonight. So make sure you resist any and all forms of distractions. Um, spending a few hours in the presence of God is always an advantage to your life and your destiny. That, that distraction that, you know, doesn't allow people to sit in one place where the word of God comes. They are thinking of this typing, this calling, this snapping, this doing, this replying, this is an attack from the enemy. Because your word will come and once you are not sensitive to receive that which is yours, you can abort prophetic seasons through carelessness. Are we together now? Yes. He says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? He's talking about negligence. Not that salvation did not come, but through carelessness, we neglected so great salvation. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Tonight I'm teaching on the topic, Rise Up and Walk. It's a very powerful teaching. Tonight, God is imparting upon us faith for extraordinary dimensions. I believe God gave me this word because for someone you have encompassed a mountain long enough, you have stayed in a level, a dimension in the spirit, whether in the prophetic, whether in the anointing, whether financially in your destiny, and God by this teaching is ready to open up a door and shift you to a new season. You believe that? Shout a believer's amen. amen. It is possible for a man to be camped around a life, a dimension for a long time. And until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him, you can remain at a position in life and destiny until your word comes. May this be someone's word tonight. So let's begin our discussion. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Say for my learning. Prophesy it. Say for my learning. Whatsoever things, when you find any story, when you find any parable, when you find anything that was captured in scripture, the Bible says it was written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. That means there are prophetic lessons and there are mysteries that are hidden in parables, in stories. And I told you that revelation is when you are able to derive light from knowledge. Knowledge itself is not revelation. Knowledge carries revelation. You can have knowledge and never get revelation. Are we together? Revelation comes out of knowledge. So before revelation comes to you, you need knowledge. But when you have that knowledge, the breath of the Spirit opens your eyes so that you are able to have revelation that is derived. The light that comes from stories, the light that comes from um, parables, the light that comes from various expressions in the Bible is where the spirit of revelation lies. So we're going to consider a very important discussion tonight. Someone is ready to go higher. So whatsoever things that were written aforetime, the Bible says they were written for my learning, for your learning, so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Our story begins now. Acts chapter 3, please, from verse 1. Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. Now Peter and John went up into the temple at the hour of prayer. Say the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour. That would be about 3 p.m. thereabout. And then the Bible says, a certain man, we're reading first to verse, um, let's try to verse 8, and then we'll push it down later on. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. Follow the story now. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Verse 3, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked and alms. Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them. Watch this. Expecting to receive something of them. Verse 6. 
The Bible says, And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Prophesy to yourself. Say, rise up and walk. Ah, that does not look like you believe it. Say, myself, rise up and walk. Mm, rise up and walk. Verse 7, the Bible says, And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8, And he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Very quickly, I want us to observe a few things from this very interesting discussion. Number one, the first thing I want you to notice from this discussion is the timing of the miracle. The timing of the miracle. The first revelation that God wants to bring to us is the timing of the miracle. The Bible tells us that all of that event happened at the hour of prayer. Somebody said the hour of prayer. One more time. Say the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer is the hour of faith. The hour of prayer is the hour of miracles. It matters that you understand the story from the beginning. The Bible tells us that that entire story was predicated upon the subject of prayer. It was on their way to pray as their custom was that a miracle happened. Are we together? The hour of prayer. Immediately we learn that many things happen when we give ourselves to prayer. Prayer was the premise. Prayer was the basis for that story to even start. For that story to even happen. The Bible says they went to pray at the hour of prayer. Meaning if they had no business with prayer, such a story including this miracle will not even be captured in scripture. The basis for the story is that they were committed to the ministry of prayer. Are we learning now? Prayer has several advantages. You will collide with many destiny advancing possibilities in the place of prayer. The Bible says Peter and John, they went to pray. They went to pray at the temple at the hour of prayer. Discipline, sacrifice, consistency, the hour of prayer. Learn these believers. I have taught you endlessly about prayer. A lot of stories, a lot of miracles will be alienated from your life and your Christian experience if you are not passionate about prayer. Are we together? In fact, the Bible puts it this way, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. KJV says, careful, the word there is anxious, anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. I like the way the Bible puts it. It now prohibits you from doing something wrong. Then it tells you what to do instead. Be anxious or careful for nothing. Then it says, but in everything, 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 every subject of your life can be prayed about. In everything, by prayer and supplication, it says, with thanksgiving, let your request, KJV says, be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God. Prayer. It was at the hour of prayer. There are many things that happen to people in scripture at the hour of prayer. That includes Jesus. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 29, the Bible says, As he prayed, Jesus, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. There are certain stories you will never believe about God and will never be captured in your Christian experience until you are a man of prayer. For instance, genuine spiritual encounters. They will be foreign to you if you are not given to prayer. You will think people are lying. Sometimes you will think people are exaggerating experiences. There are dimensions you have to attain unto in prayer to experience certain realities. Someone say, I will pray. Let the devil hear you say, I will pray. The hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. Everybody who was not given to prayer never had an opportunity to be a witness of that testimony. 
The testimony was not for men who wanted to see it. The testimony was for men who were given to the ministry of prayer, not by confession, but by profession. They took the step to the temple. It was on their way to the temple. They had met the man there. That was not their first time seeing him. He had been there. He knew people would come to pray. He knew that the kind prayer does something to your heart. Isn't it amazing that the man wanted arms? And of all the places he could go to beg for help, he stayed close to the people of prayer. Something happens to your heart. That heart of stone is broken. You receive an impartation of genuine compassion. When you are given to the ministry of prayer, is someone learning? I have taught you that an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. Prayer is not for men of God, no. Prayer is not just for, um, you know, prayer warriors or those given into the prophetic or the apostolic ministry. Luke 18, 1. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Once you are a man with flesh and blood, the Bible mandates that you pray. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Be consistent in your prayer adventure. Be consistent in your prayer adventure. Be consistent in your prayer adventure. Don't pray today and then allow calamity to have to force you or fear or Satan or some kind of tragic situation. You must culture yourself. Listen, there is a discipline to prayer. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication, but that spirit is enhanced. That dimension of the Holy Spirit is enhanced through a committal, a committal to remaining prayerful. There is a responsibility component to prayer. The apostles had their hour of prayer. Do you have your hour of prayer? A time dedicated to spend with God. A time dedicated where no activity becomes a distraction. I have taught you, it is your responsibility under God to walk with the spirit of wisdom. To carve out a schedule for an effective, excelling prayer life. A non-religious approach to prayer. You are not just praying to gain acceptance from people that you are prayerful. You are not just praying to deceive yourself. I service like the Pharisees and the scribes did. That prayer has become for you a revelation that many things happen in the place of prayer. So the first thing we learn from this scripture, the first thing we observe is that God in teaching us the value of prayer decided to move the Holy Spirit to trap this story at an hour whose significance we should not ignore. The Bible says the hour of prayer. Are you ready for the second observation? Number two, we learn from this story what I call the degrading power of afflictions and calamities. The degrading power of afflictions and calamities. The Bible simply calls him, give us that scripture again, verse 2, calls him a certain man. Please look up. How many of you know that when you give birth to children, in order of priority, after all of the hospital formalities, you look forward to naming them. There's something called in many cultures and many circles, a naming ceremony. That people even create a ceremony around names. And from that day, you don't just call the individual child. You call the individual a name. Even if you want to add baby, you can say baby grace, baby mercy. This man had a name. But something happens to men. There is a degrading effect that calamities and tragedies bring to men such that your problem becomes greater than your name to a point that they do not even know what you are called. This man was not the only man in scripture who had such a degrading effect. Many people in scripture who received miracles, for instance, there was a woman too in the Bible called the woman with the issue of blood. A woman with the issue of blood. The Bible talks about another man on blind. Jesus himself had a name. 
even though as the word incarnate when he became man the name was given to him the degrading power of afflictions and calamities let me tell you the truth afflictions and calamities have a way of so degrading you you degenerate in honor to a point that people forget your name and forget what you stand for they forget what you represent this has been the plague of many people that family where people die early this one that one they 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 coin you out of a situation of pain that was the, the situation of this man surely he had a name surely he had a family how come the family so left him alone and this man at least from the story we know he was not a baby a name but i have good news for someone isaiah 62 and verse 2 i like that scripture the bible says media give it to us and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory help me and thou shalt be called by a new name a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name for someone in the name of Jesus that statement Ichabod that statement that has connected you to pain to calamity to tragedy may my God give you a new name may my God give you a new name in the name of Jesus Christ God can give people new names God can give people new names a name simply means a means of identification. God can rewrite a man's story such that even though you were Rahab or was Rahab, you would never be traced to whatever it is that happened in Jericho. God can give a Ruth a new name. Do you know that at the end of Ruth's life, if not that the Bible told you, you would never know that she was once married, lost her husband and lost her children. God is able to give men a new name. For someone you have come into the end of the old, I don't care what has happened from January till now in the name that is above all names. I'm praying for you. May my God begin to do strange things in your life. May my God begin to work miracles in your life. May the King of Kings arise on your behalf and give you a new name. I believe this. A man can be called by a name that only the mouth of the Lord will call. There are certain miracles that when it happens, it becomes an object of awe and marvel and people will carve that testimony around your life. This is the woman God gave for man God restored 10 of his family. This is the family where 10 people got a job in one week, a new name. You believe that? When a season where God is renaming people. Did God not rename people in the Bible? Did you not read that Abraham became Abraham, the father of nations? Did you not read that Sarai became Sarah? Did you not read that Jacob became Israel? Is that still in your Bible? Did you not read that Cephas became Peter, Saul became Paul? God is still renaming people. May he rename you. May he give you a name that your children will be called, your grandchildren will be called, a name connected to honor, a name connected to speed, a name connected to restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Number two. Calamities and, inf and afflictions of any kind can degrade men, can bedevil men, can plague men to a point where the dignity that is connected to being God's creation so erodes from your life and people simply name you by your calamities. Can we go to number three? Number three. Still verse two. Please give it to us media. I hope someone is learning. Now watch this. The Bible says, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb lame from his mother's womb pay attention now lame from his mother's womb thank God for this extra information if the Bible just said the man was lame 
would probably blame it on his sin or unrighteousness but the bible here says lame from his mother's womb there are times that people are plagued with conditions and challenges that was not their making the bible says to us clearly from this scripture that it was not a product of this man's carelessness it was not a product of this man's making lame from his mother's womb his mother's womb was simply a description to mean we do not understand the origin of this so the only origin that we can trace to was that from the time he was born he was born that way now there were people who were not born the way they later became an example was the man Mephibosheth Mephibosheth was a healthy child something happened eventually and the midwife dropped him and he was crippled for all his life but in this instance the Bible tells us that this man was lame like every other baby he looked forward to a time you see let me tell you this I'm not a doctor and my apologies if I don't get that right but most times you do not really see some of the troubles in children from the time of birth is that true you would need to allow some time to see those deficiencies with all due respect their parents trusting God for miracles for children plagued with say autism or some kind of sickness say every baby under normal circumstance will look like a healthy baby you would have rejoiced when this man was born but at a point in his life where other children should be walking the parents discovered that something was wrong he was still sitting perhaps they consulted physicians and the physician said well let's give him some time never knowing that this man until he became an adult would remain lame the Bible says lame from his mother's womb John chapter 9 please from verse 1 to 3 there was another incident like this and Jesus gave us perspective to dealing with these kinds of issues verse 1 John chapter 9 is someone learning in the house of God and as Jesus passed by he saw a man you see this this trouble of not having good names again which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin that this man or this man or his parents that he was born blind Jesus in one word said neither that means there are times that the calamities and the troubles that befall men is as a result of sin is as a result of disobedience is as a result of ignorance and carelessness but in this instance he's saying neither it's not because of the man it's not because of his parents so it is possible to be bedeviled by calamities situations that were not of your making this is a very powerful information back to Acts chapter 3 please his mother's womb does not mean caused by his mother so that you don't blame the innocent woman the woman simply got pregnant and was happy like every other pregnant mother and when it was time to give birth she gave birth to a child it is safe to assume that she gave her best as a mother to nurture that baby hoping with great expectation but something happened on the way can I tell you it is very important that you refrain from judging carelessly there are times that people go through things in their life that is not a product of spiritual laxity it may not even be a product of of prayerlessness or carelessness the bible tells us that there is a possibility of being plagued from your mother's womb a reality that started from a dimension beyond the scope of science beyond the scope of common sense are we learning now not all challenges in the lives of men are caused by sin and disobedience there are challenges that people face in life that hopefully until we scale beyond the shores of this level of knowledge we may never understand and it may not make sense to us and the bible says to judge righteous judgments is someone receiving that now let me say this still on the third observation i wrote something here the origin of an affliction or condition is not as important as the determination to be free from it the origin of an affliction the origin of a condition is not as important as your determination 
to be free from it. This is something you must learn. Debating over the cause of this man's problem, debating over the true origin was not so necessary, else the Bible would have dwelt there. Isn't it amazing that at the end of the story, the most important thing is that the man jumped up, was walking, was leaping, and was praising God. The origin of an affliction, the origin of a condition might be important to diagnose it, but it's not as important as the determination to be free from it. It is amazing how people dwell for years. They will not pray. They will not fast. They will not learn the word of God. All they are concerned about is, I must know the root of this problem. And that is not necessarily wrong. But knowing the root of a problem does not guarantee deliverance, nor does it guarantee salvation. Even if the Bible did not tell us the origin of our problem, the Bible concludes that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Thankfully, we have perspective. We know that by one man, Adam, together with Eve, all men were grafted into this nature of sin. But whether we were told that or not, knowing that Adam was the originator of our sin nature did not bring us salvation. Believing in Adam does not give you salvation. Getting angry with Adam does not take sin out of your life. Are we together? You can insult Adam all you can. Join with Eve and insult two of them. You will still go to hell if you are not saved. Anger with Adam does not impart salvation. Hating God for putting man in at the tree of the Garden of Eden does not bring salvation. Please learn this. There are many of you by this word, God is telling you it's time to go forward. Looking back and discussing uh, this house rent problem, this whatever problem, the most important thing is the issue is there now. So what do we do about the problem now? If I stayed in a good house with a good house, malaria, but you are sick now, what do you do? Pray or go to the hospital or do both. Don't sit down wasting your time. Isn't it amazing how many people can spend years discussing problems? You will meet someone who will tell you, I hate the government of this, this years. 15 years ago, I lost my job. Till today, I don't have another one. Okay, agreed. Justifiably so, you were victimized. 15 years is a long time. At the time you started complaining, someone was born who took responsibility with their lives and the person right now is enjoying grace and greatness. Refuse to complain. Stop blaming people's situations and conditions and be determined. Be determined. Even if you do not know what to do, hate that condition enough. Hmm. Are we learning? My uncle promised me that as soon as I arrive, Abuja I should give him a call. The day I was going to arrive, he died. Okay, we feel bad, honestly, but he's dead. It's a painful truth, but it's the truth. What are you going to do five years after his death? Why are you like this? It's a long story. Are you, do you have time? Yes. Okay, so the story started in January. I arrived and I, was, I stopped at Wuse too. In fact, I still remember clearly. Are we together? And the person who is listening to you is watching and say, okay, so at the end of this story, what is the lesson? The lesson is that it is not my fault. Here is a man. Here is a situation that was not the fault of the man. Hmm. Are we learning? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me.
I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome. Number four, the fourth thing we observe as we seek to explore this revelation is that there are consequences to prolonged negative conditions. There are consequences to prolonged situations, prolonged calamities. Lend me your attention now, please. There are consequences. I'll list a few of them for you. These, anybody you see, in any prolonged situation that person most likely has these mountains to overcome it's important for you to know that so that you will appreciate this story that the Bible tells us when you read it it just looks like the man was seated and then he came and was healed but there's a lot and the Lord is helping us unpack the layers of light that we need to see from this. It is impossible, many of you know that the moment a child gets to an age of discretion and realizes that there is such a child's life, the first thing that happens is low self-esteem. Immediately, while other kids are playing, you cannot play, and other nasty, sometimes ill-trained kids will come and call him all kinds of names. Are we together? That guy who cannot walk, and they laugh, and he will go back and ask his mother, why can't I walk or run like other children? There are results to prolonged calamities. There are results to prolonged problems, low self-esteem, anger, resentment, hatred, wrong perceptions about God and man. Let me list them for you again. Never downplay the effect of staying for a long time in a negative situation. Number one, low self-esteem. Our world has been plagued by this sad cancer of low self-esteem. Perhaps persons well-intentioned who did not come from families with the best of experience, regions with the best of experience. Low self-esteem, anger, resentment, hatred. It seems very justifiable to hate God and hate men. When you find out that you were not given a chance, ladies and gentlemen, please put yourself in the shoes of this man and come for koinonia say or any meeting for that matter then hear a man of God dancing and saying things like I was young and now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken you would almost want to stone that man of God and say come and see one righteous man who looks forsaken hmm. are we together there are times that you see a lot of people in church while other people are shouting amen they don't shout amen they are not they are not necessarily angry at the preacher the conflict between what the preacher is saying and the reality of what is happening in their lives is too wide on one hand they cannot say god is unfaithful but on the other hand they cannot understand why an innocent man, if it is true that children are a heritage from the Lord, where was God when that boy was formed in the womb of his mother? Where was Jeremiah 1 and verse 5? That before thou camest forth, I ordained you to be a prophet. What happened to my own ordination that I was born crippled? There are many things about God that if you are not taught, and you have to look through the lens of your pain, it will not make sense. This is the reason why you need a teaching priest to help you bring to perspective many spiritual things. 
How do you explain a man who lost his job? My God, I'm sensing the power of God very strongly here. How do you explain a man who on account of his righteousness lost his job? Where was God? The God of the three Hebrew boys. How many of you know that there are people who enter their own fire and the fire burns them? Yes, the fire burns them till they died. There are people who enter the lion's den. I mean a literal lion's den from church history. It, what happened to Daniel didn't happen to them. Oh. The lions ate them up. They came out. They had them shouting in that cave. And then you tell me that God is a God of love. And then you tell me that God has great plans for me. You dare to quote the scripture. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. What expected end? That I was not even given a chance to fail. I was not given a chance to disobey. I was not given a chance to insult God. Rise up and walk. Is someone learning? There are results oh, to prolonged calamities. There are times I've had the honor of praying for very sick people and sick people who have been sick for a long time. And while their family members may be rejoicing that they finally gotten my attention, either to pray on phone or to minister to the person, Sometimes you see some level of joy from the people because they can almost guarantee that healing has come. While I'm speaking, sometimes I need to ask the sick person, are you there? The person does not say amen. It's not unbelief. It's what pain can do. Are we together? My friend, I'm ready to pray for you in Jesus' name. And someone is shouting amen and they even be begin to clap. And the person who is sick is, please pray. And very soon you will find out that you are at least the 25th or 26th anointed man praying. Not the first, not the fifth, not the tenth. They are, they are tired of their expectations being disappointed. By the time you come as number 26 and while you are giving them all kinds of arrogant testimonies. It was just last week I raised someone from a wheelchair. They say, please pray and leave this place. Let the doctors do their best until I die. Carry all this your Pentecostal gibberish and walk out of this hospital. Hmm. This is the reason why everyone must join me in praying this prayer tonight. Satisfy me early with your mercy. Something happens to you when pain becomes prolonged. You no longer see the possibility of God's faithfulness. Something happens to you when poverty, when sickness, when infirmities prolong. Someone say, satisfy me early. Can we go to number five? The first point, I'm just sharing with you the observations from this scripture first. So don't forget, number one, the timing. A call to press into the realm of prayer. That many things are connected to prayer including miraculous stories like this. Number two, reveals to us the degrading power of calamities, afflictions, and negative conditions. Number three, tells us lame from his mother's womb that there are times that people's calamities are not a making of themselves. They found themselves there. But that the most important thing is that the origin of an affliction or condition is not as important as your determination to be free from it. Then number four, that calamities and negative conditions come with certain side effects. I listed a few. Low self-esteem, anger, resentment, hatred, and a wrong perception about God. That is one of the most devastating effects of prolonged negative conditions. It gives you a wrong perception about God. Can we go to the fifth observation? If I asked you, please look up. If I asked you how many miracles happened in that story, you would tell me one miracle. 
The miracle is what you know as the command for the man to rise up and walk. But I'm going to show you that at least four miracles happened in that story. Three of the miracles were silent and one of them was obvious. But the one that was obvious was because three of them happened. Are you ready? Follow me. Mm. The first miracle that happened to this man was not his healing. The first miracle that happened to this man, please give us verse 2. The Bible says a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Everybody say was carried. My goodness. That doesn't look like a miracle till you hear me for a minute or two. The first miracle that happened to him was not his healing. But that certain man, watch this. They believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily. Daily, not weekly. Have you ever attended to a sick person? There are times that even as the loved one of that sick person, you honestly get tired and weary. It is a miracle when men believe in you indefinitely when there are no results yet in your life. It's a real miracle. The Bible says certain men, he was carried, whom they laid daily. What is the first miracle? That certain men believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily daily now connected to that miracle still the first miracle was where they laid him at the bible says they laid him at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful <laughs> they laid him at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful listen to me do you know what that means now i've studied that beautiful gate concept it was beautiful the word beautiful gate came there because other materials within the temple were made of gold and silver but that particular gate was made of bronze but the bronze was so polished in fact it was called Corinthian bronze it was so polished to an extent that when light came it glowed and illuminated even more than the other doors beautiful gate they laid him there and the miracle started happening to his perception. There was something he saw at that gate. He could not see where he was coming from. There was something that he saw at that gate. He could not afford to see in his house. It mattered that what he was seeing was beautiful. Even though his life was ugly. Beautiful gate. Is someone learning? The first miracle was that certain men believed in him believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily at a place which could start correcting his perception and building his faith this was what they did those men helped him they were the original foundation when you hear rise up and walk you credit it to peter and to john but i'm telling you you are wrong the first sponsors of those miracles were nameless, faceless, divine connectors and burden bearers. No name, but their impact could not be denied. When you receive a healing, it's easy to be credited to God through Joshua Selman, but the nameless person who told you come for koinonia, the nameless person who said, are you going for koinonia? Can I give you a lift? You don't even know the name of the person. The greatest miracles we celebrate are not usually the first to happen. There is always a build up of a foundation. When you celebrate a great, I don't know anybody who claps for foundations. We clap for buildings. This beautiful building is suspended from a very solid foundation. See that now? I know you celebrate the job. But how about the one who told you don't give up? Try applying one last time. The Bible says men who took him daily. Someone say daily. daily. The miracle is in their refusing to be tired. That they carried the fact that they carried him daily. Men they returned him back at night. He would not be left there every day. 
Why are you wasting your time speaking to my destiny? I'm already a failure. And mama says, not that you are my son. If it would take 20 years, I will know one day, God will raise a preacher to speak to you. Let me tell you, when you are clapping for me, make sure you clap for her too. God used both of us. It is amazing the amount of silent people who have played mysterious roles in our lives that may never be seen, may never be congratulated. They are not enlightened enough to be recognized and honored. Yet today we stand upon the foundation of those people. Remember the one who woke you up every night. You were angry but you still went for the devotion. Today you are a pastor. Are we together? Remember your uncle who told you by 4 p.m. return home. You are still a child. You said I'm 13 years. He said go out of my house then. If you feel you can make it on your own. Once you are under my care, return home by evening. That's the reason why you are a good father today. You would have been a careless person roaming around around. But someone planted that seed. It was while you sat in one place that you had the opportunity to read a book that began to culture your mindset. We owe those nameless people who refuse to be tired. What if a night before the man's miracle, the man said, we have tried. You too, you know we have tried. Tomorrow we will not be around. Their consistency is what made the apostle to be able to look at him. Hmm. Is someone learning? I hope you've not forgotten what we are discussing. Rise up and walk. I'm showing you how to access extraordinary dimensions. These are just observations we are bringing out of that story. Hmm. So the first miracle that happened to this man, still on point five, was that certain men believed in him. I've taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers. Can I recap for one minute? That in your life, as far as the ministry of men is concerned, you will encounter four kinds of destiny helpers. Number one, they are called divine connectors. These men served as divine connectors. They didn't have the power to heal the man, but they were able to help him and take him where he could be healed. Number two, men of influence. These are the second groups of divine, of destiny helpers, men of influence. They have the credibility, they have the track record to be able to recommend you. Their names are keys. They can open doors and gates for you. Number three, gifted men. You need gifted people. They will close leakages and wastages from your life, your organization. One gifted man can have the strength of 50 people. Number four, burden bearers. I've taught you that burden bearers don't have the power to move you forward. Their assignment is to stop you from going backward. These are men who love you regardless. They don't love you because you are a preacher. They don't love you because you are CEO. They love you sincerely. That even when the crown is not on your head, they are still there. Even when you do not have the garment as Jesus, they are still there. May you find such men in your life. If you are surrounded by only people who celebrate the crown, the scepter, or the throne, you will be in trouble. Because the day your crown is not there, these are the three things that make a king. His crown, his scepter, and his throne. But there are times, even if you are Jesus, you will have to give up that crown, give up that throne, give up that scepter, and become a man. At such points, may God give you burden bearers. Remember another incident of burden bearers? The men who tore the zinc and brought another crippled man. They insisted that they wanted this man to be healed. And on hearing that Jesus was organizing a conference, there was no way they could come in because of the crowd. And the Bible says they literally tore the roof and brought that man in. In other words, whatever consequence, let it be on us. And Jesus said when he saw their faith, one thing we learn from that scripture is the man who was crippled never spoke. All those who did the speaking were his friends. The man who needed the miracle himself was quiet. 
that there are men who can stand up and take your matter on their head until you smile. May God bring such people to your life. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to see the second miracle that happened? All right, so number two, the second miracle. I hope I've not lost you. We are still discussing the fifth observation. And at under point five, one or A if you want, the first miracle was the willingness of certain men to believe in him enough to carry him and to lay him daily without getting tired, without expressing their anger or exhaustion, and that they placed him at the gate beautiful, a place that could begin to alter and correct his perception. How many of you know that when you are kept close to a gate and you don't have the power to move, you are forced to keep seeing? It's not that he had the liberty to rest. He would sleep and wake up and all that was before him was the gate. And if you think what you see does not matter, ask the cattle that Jacob reared in Laban's house. What led to their multiplication, their change of state? Something they saw. Are we learning? The second miracle was the ability for that man. This is where we give the crippled man credit. The second miracle was the ability to look beyond his pain. The ability to look beyond his legitimate resentments and to humble himself to be carried. The second miracle that happened there was the ability for that man to look beyond his pain and to allow himself to be carried every day. It's one thing to want to carry the man, but the man had the power to say, I'm tired of this mockery. He would have called that help mockery. It takes a lot of humility to look beyond your pain, especially because we live in a world where we hate drawing sympathy. Nobody wants to be told, hey, yeah, it's not sorry, eh? Do you think they just carried him silently? I'm sure one day they would carry him. What if the man wanted to use the toilet? What if the man wanted to take his bath? It would look like mockery, but they had to carry him. The humility to look beyond his pain, legitimate anger and resentment, and allow himself to be carried. That was the second miracle. Is someone learning? It takes a lot of humility. The scripture is coming to my mind. Thank you, Jesus. What scripture is that now? Help us. Luke 16. I think that's Luke 16. A parable that Jesus gave about an arrogant man who was ashamed to beg. Look for it. Luke either verse 1, 2 or 3. Media help me. Luke chapter 16. Yes. Watch this. Just the first three or four verses. And he said, please let me have your attention. Unto the disciples. Jesus now. There was a certain rich man which had a steward. He had a what? Steward, a caretaker. And the same man was accused that he had wasted his goods. So the steward of the rich man was a careless man. Verse 2. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. He said, For thou mayest be no longer a steward. I'm going to fire you. Watch what the man said. Verse 3. Beautiful. This is what I'm looking for. Then the steward said within himself, are you seeing pride now? What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me stewardship. I cannot dig and to beg I am ashamed. There are people like this. Give us NIV, verse 3. NIV please, or amplified anyone. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. Watch this. <laughs> I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. May you not be like this. Yeah. That a man can lack capacity and yet even where help can be offered, he said, I am ashamed. It's a miracle when you find a man who is humble enough to be carried. There are people today, if only they have the opportunity and the humility to ask, please, God is helping me, but I have a situation right now with my house rent. I am not careless. Can mercy be shown me? Shame can be taken away with one alert, but they can remain there, punish their wives, punish their children, 
punish every bee. I'm too big to beg. I know what to do. There are people who are too big to be prayed for. There are people who are too big to be counseled. It's a miracle when a man becomes humble enough to be carried every day. Maybe once a while, that's all, all right. But every day, it is extreme humility to not only carry a man, but that the man allows himself to be carried. Can you allow yourself to be carried on the wings of prophecy? One day you'll be able to walk, but while you are still leprous, can you allow, even if you are Moses, you will be carried for a while. Even if you are Jesus, you will be carried for a while. One day you will save the world, but not as a baby. While you are a baby, Herod can kill you. Allow Joseph and Mary to carry you to the place of safety. Moses, you are born a deliverer, but not as a baby. Look left and right and you will see the dead corpses of children that have been wasted because they are searching for you. If help comes while you are rising, don't reject it. Did you hear what I said? If help comes while you are rising, please don't reject it. When you find genuine help, don't reject it. If I were that man, I don't know how many times my ego will be stung. But one thing I know I would have obtained grace to do was to say thank you every day. That while these men carry me on the way to the gate beautiful, I will say, gentlemen, I do not take your generosity for granted. I don't have the power to help myself, but thank you. At a point, they'll be tired and say, don't stop saying thank you every day. But I will reply by telling them, for as long as you carry me, that thank you must come out of my mouth. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. That's the greatest person you owe thanks. Some of you never say thank you, Jesus, till you come to church. Say thank you, Jesus. Ah, for life, for strength, for health. Thank you, Jesus. For salvation, for healing, for my mindset, the transformation happening. Thank you. For the anointing you are bringing to my ministry. Thank you. Someone say thank you. Someone say thank you. When you are carried, give thanks. When you are carried, give thanks. When you are helped by God and helped by man, give thanks. Give thanks. Never take the help of God and the help of men for granted. Give thanks. Give thanks. I hope that man went back to look for those people to say thank you when he received his healings. Beware of times when your helpers do not need to help you again because God has taken you forward. Still don't forget them. If they were in your yesterday, they still deserve your thank you. Don't just say thank you because they are helping. No. It's been 10 years now. You don't need their help again. You are now a millionaire. That is the foolishness of many people. Helped by parents. Helped by preachers. Helped by destiny helpers. When God helps them to become, they do not have the fortitude to reach back to say thank you. Not to God, not to men. Some of you may need to think about people who did something yesterday in your life and obtain grace. 1,000. 100,000. What for? I've not heard from you for 15 years. Just to let you know that I remembered something you did before. They were about to carry me to a harbor list. And you said, no, come and keep me, keep this boy in my house. I will train the child. And he trained you for three years. Don't say only three years. And don't send them a text saying, many people have helped my life. You are one of them. That's an unwise way to say thank you. When you are saying thank you to people, don't do that. Don't say, many people have changed my life just to let you know you are one of them. Don't make the ability to carry you to the gate look insignificant. They didn't have the power to heal you. But if Peter did not see you, you would die a leper. Are we together? I know that the person did not have the power to pay your school fees, but he took you from the village to the city. I know you say he's, he insulted you every day. I agree. Learn the lesson and don't do that to your children. But it's too small a reason to say he was a bad man. As much as he insulted you, you don't know the quarrel he had with his wife in the bedroom every day to send you back. And the man said, no. The child may be stupid, but leave him. Give him a chance. Two more years. That's how you got admission. Today you have become a great person. Don't look back and say, that useless uncle, may he even die. Make sure you find something after this teaching. Send it to him. 
He can even reply you and say, so you are now wise enough. You don't mind him. You just do what? <laughs> hmm. This is going on here. He said, rise up and walk. The second miracle that happens to every man that happened to this man, building up to that wonderful one you call the miracle, was the ability to fuel the help in his life by lavishing gratitude and the ability to take responsibility to be humble to say every time I am helped is not weakness are we together now yes you are trusting God to start putting one block after another and God brings a blessed person who says you know what I want to do something for your family there is a three-bedroom flat here. I'm doing it because I love you sincerely. Take. Now, there are times that the wisdom you need to apply, I know there are times that collecting certain things is like selling your birthright. But this discussion is under normal spiritual conditions, void of hatred and whatever it is. When help comes, receive it all. Help can compress time. Did you hear what I said? Help can compress time. <laughs> someone met me one time I think he was tired of applying for a visa and they kept rejecting and the guy got angry he believed that the spirit was stopping him and so he stood for me to pray and I said okay just tell me how are you doing it and when I saw what he was doing I said you will not get this thing this way that's not how it works you see and I looked at him and I knew he was not listening to me Now, who is, who is at a loss? The guy wants, it, and he's, I, I, you could imagine in my, I'm the one, I have a rev, I know the spirit that, that stopped me. Unfortunately, those to stamp the visa don't care what spirit is pursuing you. You will still keep going back. Look, help makes things easy. Learn this. The assignment of help is to make anything possible and then to make it easy. Did you get that? The assignment of help is to make things possible and to make things easy. There are people who would have come out of the cell if only they were willing to be helped. No, I will handle the situation myself. I, I know what to do. I'm an intelligent person. From detention you go to prison and remain there. Joseph had to be helped. Jesus had to be helped. Are we together? Moses had to be helped. One time Moses was almost killing himself as a man of God because he was trying to counsel everybody. It was Jethro, his father-in-law, who called him and said, listen, you will worry yourself. These people are too many. He said, gather people, leaders over thousands, leaders over hundreds, anoint them and appoint them to handle these things. And you can now handle the weightier matters. Someone pray, send me help, oh God. Send me help again. Go ahead and pray. Send me help, oh God. Pray in one minute. The second miracle that happened to this man, help. Hallelujah. The third miracle that happened to this man was that as he laid daily at the gate beautiful, something began to happen to his mind. I can tell you the fact that a miracle began to happen to his mind was obvious because his faith was being built. He knew he could receive. Even though he did not know he could receive a miracle, are we together now? That perception. I'm sure one day he kept looking at that beautiful. You see, this is the part of it that only the Holy Spirit can do. Only God knows what the Spirit began to do within that man. You don't have to die this way. Maybe in his small mind he was saying, I will keep begging for money. One day when I beg for money enough, I may build a house and at least move there and stop begging. Who knows? 
But I can tell you one thing. It is impossible to sit in the presence of a beautiful gate every day and nothing happens to your mind. It is impossible to sit in the presence of anointed people every day and nothing happens to you. Prayerful people every day and nothing happens. Prosperous people every day. Something happens when you come into the company of the great. Did you hear what I said? That gate's beautiful you see. As inanimate as it was, it was doing something to that man. I believe that the Holy Spirit was using that to say your destiny can be this way. I'm sure the Holy Spirit taught him that do you know that gate did not build itself. One day, once upon a time, that bronze was once under the earth. It was not a gate. It took a man to build it. I'm sure the man was looking at his life. A gate is a passageway. I'm sure the man was looking at himself. That one day people will be able to get to know God through me. It's a miracle when God brings you close enough to people, to things, and to situations that begin to transform your mind. If that is your desire, shout amen. amen. Very quickly, let's go to the sixth observation. Someone is learning. Are we together? In fact, write this down just to end point five. The first miracle you need is not a change of condition, but a change of perception. That the first miracle you need in your life, generally speaking, is not a change of condition, but a change of perception. It is a change of your perception that attracts the grace that changes your conditions. I know you don't have the job yet, but change your mindset. I know the members have not come yet, but allow God to alter your perception for good. A change of perception always foreruns a change of condition. Number six. There were two abilities in that man. Two abilities in that man that he recognized and he used. Please look up. No matter how degenerated you are, God will always leave you with two abilities. That one cannot be taken away from you. Number one, his ability to see. Number two, his ability to ask. These two abilities remained with that man regardless his situation. His ability to see, perceive. His ability to ask, verbalize his request. The ability to perceive, the ability to correct his mentality, and the ability to ask. Because the Bible says, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, I believe, it says, Ask and ye shall, and it shall be given to you. It's a law. It says, Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it says, and it shall be opened to you. Verse 8 says, For everyone. There are blessings that are for everyone, including the leprous including the crippled, even if they were crippled from their mother's womb. It says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. The man had the ability to see, to correct his perception, and he had the ability to ask. And these were the two tools that he used to birth his miracle. The ability to see is a miracle. Make reference to my teaching, the seeing eye. The seeing eyes is a very powerful teaching it helps you recover to pray to access the gift of sight blind Bartimeo did not say that I may see he said that I may receive my sight because sight is beyond having an eye that is opened it is light plus a good eye that equals sight even if your eye is good and there is no light you cannot see are we together now his ability to see and his ability to ask. Seventh observation. Please write this down. You're going to learn something very powerful. Are we learning so far? Rise up and walk. Verse 7. Now, pay attention to this observation. His remaining in that condition was no longer an issue of his foundation or upbringing. His remaining from the time he recognized that he had the power to see 
from the time he recognized that he had the power to ask, his remaining in that condition was no longer an issue of his foundation, nor an issue of his upbringing, but his mentality. Did you get that? From the time he discovered that he had the ability to see, to change his perception, from the time he discovered that he had the ability to ask and it shall be given to him, it was no longer an issue of his foundation, an issue of his upbringing, an issue of his auntie, his uncle, an issue of the job he lost. Please look up. From the time the word of God comes to you, to realize that your destiny depends on you and God primarily, blaming parents, blaming curses, blaming whatever becomes null and void from that time. If the word of liberation has not come, are we together? Pardon can be granted unto you to blame every other thing and every other person. But from the day you discover I have the power to see, I can change my perception, I can change my understanding. What I had that was a wrong ideology can be corrected. What I saw wrongly, I can see more perfectly and accurately. And that you have the ability to ask. Number one, to ask the father of fathers. And number two, to ask men. From the day you recognize that you have the ability to change your perception and the ability to ask, the calamity you are in becomes your fault. Let me tell you a few things you can ask for. You can ask questions that lead to knowledge that leads to your liberty. Are we together now? Yeah. The centurion asked a question when Philip joined his chariot. He said, tell me please, of whom was this man speaking about? Himself or another? Dr. Mudok will say, a question is the seed for an answer. You are not deserving of an answer if you don't ask questions. Is it not in your Bible? Call on to me and I will answer you. Is that in your Bible? I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hear me. From the day you realize that you have the power to see, ministry should not be this small. Business should not be this small. From the day you recognize that you are a giant in the spirit, from the day Gideon, you realize that your prophetic destiny is to be a mighty man of valor and that you have the power to ask. Blaming anybody or blaming any condition does not suffice from that point. From the point this man realized that he had the power to see and the power to ask, his remaining in that condition became a product of his mentality. Now, pay attention please. Do you know that the man started asking, but there was problem with the asking. He was asking according to his mentality. He never asked for healing because he did not know healing was possible. So he asked, but he asked for arms. There are many people asking for more inferior things. For instance, asking God for money when you should ask for wisdom. Asking God for the life of your enemies when you should ask him for an understanding heart. When Solomon asked God for an understanding heart, God made, he told him other things he would have asked for. You would have asked for the life of your enemies. Even if your enemies are dead, it does not make you successful. He said, leave the issue of enemy. Give me an understanding heart. Could it be that many of you, the reason why your destiny has not scaled to a level is because you have been asking, but you are asking the wrong things, which are a product of your mentality. Where you should ask for understanding, you have been asking for money. Are we together? Hmm. It matters what you ask and what you ask depends on what you know. It matters what you ask and what you ask depends on what you know. What you ask depends on what you know. What you ask depends on what you know. Hallelujah. A buffet can be prepared in front of you 
and out of fear or whatever it is, you may not even know that anything you ask on that table will be given to you. Even if you want little of everything. But you can sit down there salivating and you are angry and the buffet was made for you. You can take water, take juice and you are just watching and everything. He said, all things are yours. But you only ask according to knowledge. The prayer for light is a powerful prayer because you only arise and shine in this kingdom when your light comes, when your light comes. What you ask for is a picture of your mentality. What you ask for. I told you years ago that Pat Robertson of Blessed Memory now, I watched one of his broadcasts and I remember hearing him pray and he said as a little child, that when he was about to start ministry, he asked the Lord for three things. One, wisdom. Two, favor. Three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I said, wow. So these are the spiritual resources that would turn an ordinary man to rise and have a global broadcast station. I went to God. I started changing the things I was asking for. Lord, in a similar vein, give me wisdom. Give me favor. Give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad that I asked that. I'm still asking that until today because it can be in measure. Jesus increased in wisdom. Jesus increased in favor. Yesterday's dimension of wisdom may not be able to confront tomorrow's challenges. And so my asking remains. But I ask because I know that God is Abba, Pata, He's Father, He's a giver, and that the quality of fathers is that they give without withholding, provided it will not destroy you. He said, ye have not, because ye ask not. Many of you have not been able to ask for help because you don't know the value of help. You've not asked for wisdom because you've not learned the value of wisdom. You've not asked for knowledge because you've not seen the value of light. Ye have not because ye ask not. Is someone learning? This is very powerful. From the time you realize the ability to change your mindset, your perception, and the ability to ask, your predicaments remain your fault. Not God's fault, not the fault of yesterday, not the fault of your foundation. Can I give you the eighth observation? Now we get to Peter finally. Acts chapter 3 and verse 4 or 6. Let's try 6. Okay, well, 4 is fine. So finally we get to the point in the story where Peter arrives. I hope you know that Peter had been seeing that man every day because they went to pray every day and the man was laid there every day. But on this certain day, the Bible says, back down to verse 3, please. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple? Now, please look up. The fact that Peter and John said, silver and gold I do not have. What did the man see in these two people that made him isolate everybody to ask these two? Because they clearly, that they said, they, maybe they dress well, I don't know. But seeing the right people was the God factor in this miracle. How do you isolate two people out of a crowd of people thronging in to pray? There are things only God can do. But when your mindset, the mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. The miracle could not come until his mentality changed. Let me say that again. The mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. Don't you bother about the ability. That is God's business. But the mentality is your responsibility. The ability to prosper cannot come from you. But the mentality to prosper, knowing its purpose and its dynamics is your responsibility. Increase, church growth, that one is not your business. It is God that brings the increase. But the mentality to be a pastor after God's heart, a teaching priest to love, to teach, to lay down your life for your sheep, that one is your own responsibility. Can I tell you the truth? 
when mentality is intact power will not be deficient when mentality is intact power will not be deficient back to verse 3 let's connect the dots now who seen Peter seeing Peter I like this was he not seeing them every day there is a kind of seeing God had walked upon his mind he had partnered with God looking at the beautiful gate can I tell you the truth the beautiful gate is training you to see Peter <laughs> the beautiful gate if you know how to draw lessons you know how to train yourself at the beautiful gate then you are ready to see Peter and John the company will come one day but you must learn to see things a certain way the anointing the lifting will come if you cannot appreciate the beautiful gate it cannot talk it cannot speak it can't lay hands but there is a reason why God kept leading the people to drop the man there in front of the beautiful gate seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple he asked them for arms at least let's give him credit he's known how to start asking at least he's known now that when you are silent your life goes the direction of your silence he's begun to open his mouth and take responsibility at least he's learned now that for everyone that asketh, he receiveth. Verse 4. Do you know that Peter's first assignment was not to be a miracle worker? Peter's first assignment was to be a teaching priest. Let me show you Peter's sermon. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Verse 5. And he gave heed to them expecting to receive something of them verse 6 and Peter said silver and gold I do not have but why are you only asking for silver and gold have you been taught that there are other things you can ask for let me help you you can ask that a name come to you and cause you to rise up and walk that there are other requests that are nobler than asking for silver and gold. That was Peter's sermon. The man never knew that you could ask beyond silver and gold. The man never knew that if you ask beyond silver and gold, it will still be granted. Why ask for silver and gold when the power to rise up and walk that even cause you needing the silver and gold can still be solved? Why ask for rent alone when God can give you wisdom? Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. understand you praying for a job but have you tried praying for destiny helpers do you not know that that table can also offer you that you keep a job for me or you keep destiny helpers I will choose destiny helpers a thousand times because when you find the heart of a man he also opens his hands towards you listen I know you have been asking but I'm teaching you by this mystery that your asking is a product of your mentality. Some of you have been asking God for things. He's committed to answering. But how long will you keep collecting silver and gold when there is the ability to rise up and walk? The Bible says he asked Peter. That was his day. That was his moment. Peter said, if I leave this man this way, I have not validated my apostolic ministry and I will give you pastors according to my heart. They will help to re-edit the things you ask so that you will ask of things that have weightier spiritual value. Weightier spiritual value. Instead of asking for church members, ask for the anointing. Genuine anointing to be a blessing. Genuine power to convey the word of God with fire and light, with signs following. You have asked for a congregation you don't have space for. 
Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Rest on me. Oh, rest on me. some of you every miracle service here's your list not to insult you but to show you you need to grow God give me a car a car let somebody deposit 1 million or 10 million in my bank account Don't laugh at the man. Many of you are just like him. You are asking. You pray for hours. But the things you are asking do not have weight in the spirit. You are asking for very small things. People are asking for nations. People are asking for territories. Men like John Knox said, give me Scotland. A, a whole territory. Give me Scotland. They were apportioning nations and taking it by faith. Father, as I go for this meeting, I'm praying, please let me not be ashamed. Let at least one person be healed. Please let people know I am called. And God says, this is all. Whereas there are people saying, Lord, place a grace upon my life that will cause kings and nobles to come from every nation, like the queen of Sheba, to come and hear the wisdom of the spirit that nations will be saved in one day. Man of God, stop asking for mundane things. Ask for things that pertain unto power. Ask for spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. The capital that buys influence. The capital that buys money. The capital that buys time. The capital that buys the loyalty of men. The capital that buys longevity. Superior graces. This is what champions pray for in the spirit. Are we together? Please sit down. So Peter was teaching the man. Peter taught him that what he was asking for was not the only thing available to be received. This was Peter's sermon. Peter saw the condition of that man. Look at me. Do you know for a long time, I taught as I read my Bible, I've grown myself. Many years I've read this scripture, I don't know how many times. But I thought Peter saying silver and gold I do not have was a degradation to himself. I used to think so. That Peter meant I don't have money in my pocket. Oh shame Peter. Until I found out that what Peter was saying is I've gone to a realm where I don't need to have silver and gold. I've, 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 I have other superior spiritual resources. If I am called an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask me for silver and gold, you didn't place enough demand on that grace. What is silver and gold? That's what Peter was saying. I used to think years ago that it was a sign of poverty. No, no, no. It was not a sign of poverty, ladies and gentlemen. Not the early church. He was showing that there is a realm a man can be in. Are we together? It's a grace for sufficiency. Where you command, when God makes you a captain over his inheritance. Everywhere you go, there are resources that wait for you. Because there is a grace that commands it. And he said, please sir, give me silver and gold. And he said, young man, there are things that were given to us by Jesus 
he didn't give us silver and gold no not after three and a half years of mentorship by the Messiah if at the end of Jesus's mentorship all he did was share money and go to heaven he failed are we together silver and gold I do not have but don't be discouraged it doesn't mean I don't have it just means I don't have those mundane things I have something superior this that I have is what I give every man gives what he has in the name of Jesus of Nazareth he said rise up and walk in the name of Jesus rise up and walk rise up and thrive rise up and excel rise up and move to new prophetic horizons he says such as I have this is what I have I cannot give you silver and gold thieves can steal it it can perish you can lose it you can be careless you can invest wrongly and the money will go but there is something I can give you that no man can take from you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth I give you the ability he said it's an ability it's not just a proclamation I place upon your life he's saying an ability to rise up and walk listen rise up and walk means rise up above your yesterday rise up above your foundations he did not just say walk you cannot walk until you rise up nobody walks seated you can crawl when you sit but the first condition to walk is to rise up I impart upon you stamina he says to look at yesterday and not let it swallow you again I do something to your mindset and impart grace upon you that was what Peter gave the man don't ask me for silver and gold don't just ask me for money to pay rent that may solve a temporal problem but you are the first person in your family out of 20 people you need more than silver and gold what you need is the ability to rise up and walk rise up and walk walk out of where listen look at me let me tell you another way of saying rise up and walk are you ready Lazarus come forth because you don't bury a dead man standing Lazarus even though you are dead come forth Lazarus had to rise up and the Bible says he came out even though with grave clothes he came out the man in Acts chapter 3 was not the first man to rise up and walk the disciples had seen many people rise up and walk they saw the widow at Nain they saw her son rise up and walk they seen many people rise up and walk let me tell you it takes stamina to rise up it takes grace to rise up Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and the spirit entered me verse 2 he says when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet rise up and walk is an impartation rise up and walk is a release of grace that is time for you to stop crying sitting in self-pity rise up and walk is someone learning listen to me knowledge is what makes your praying your asking most rewarding knowledge is what makes your praying and your asking most rewarding the man kept asking for arms he would have dropped five or ten shekels he would have said thank you but he would have remained there one thing I know for sure is that if that man did not receive the ability to rise up and walk according to the law of men his helpers would have been tired one day provided they are men because the Bible says even the youth will be weary there are times your greatest helpers your helpers are ushers until you meet the helper they help you to meet the helper 
when you meet the helper don't waste that opportunity rise up and walk is better than begging for arms begging for silver and gold write this down the ninth observation and then I pull a few things together and we pray the ninth observation from this scripture are you ready verse 7 give us 7 please the Bible says Peter came after educating him and said such as I have verse 6 give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk verse 7 was a shock to me because if you don't read well you will think the guy obeyed he did not obey he wanted to but something kept him down he couldn't stand and so the power of God could not move do you know how embarrassing it would be that after coming to teach the truth nothing but the truth you now tell people rise up and walk and there are no testimonies this was what happened in Peter's conference after telling the man rise up and walk by the next Sunday there was no testimony in this instance two weeks later no testimony and Peter says something is wrong let's go back to the drawing board and he found out that the name of Jesus as powerful as it is but without a step of faith from the one wanting to receive remains impotent even though it was the real Jesus but because the man did not take any action of faith the name the power of God was present to heal as you will see shortly and Peter said let me help him and he took him by the right hand helping him to act and lifted him up the Bible says immediately the power was waiting for obedience the power was waiting for obedience immediately my God so if the man sat down there for two more weeks the power will wait there for two more weeks and it will look as if the word the name of Jesus did not carry power immediately his feet and ankle bones received what received when God opened my eyes to see this I thought it was only a human being who receives with the mind look at what the Bible says received that a man's feet can receive a man's ankle can receive a man's finances can receive a man every part of a man's life can receive it did not say the man he says his feet and his ankle receive strength receive strength and immediately verse, verse, verse 8 now the Bible says he leaping leaping he stood up and he walked I hope you know that even the walking is a miracle it's not only the healing that was a miracle he had never walked in his life mommy if you give birth to a baby who rolls from the hospital bed and just when you think the baby is going to fall you just see the baby stand and says good morning mommy <laughs> you will call it reincarnation and run out of that place are we together even Jesus did not walk as a baby so for the man to have reason and then the Bible says he leaping stood and walked this is very powerful he leaping stood and walked write this down please everyone the name of Jesus without faith on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results the name of Jesus without faith on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results the name of Jesus without faith obedience on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results the power of God only moved when the man moved the power of God only moved when the man moved ladies and gentlemen the power of God only moved when the man moved 
when men take actions of faith, the power of God and all the resources of heaven are released to back them. The power of God only moved when the man moved. Are we together? Now, let me summarize a few things for you. You can write now. Rise up and walk, number one, is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new prophetic seasons. Rise up and walk is a prophetic call. It's not just a caption of a message. It's a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons, to open up new chapters concerning your life and destiny. Rise up and walk is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons, to open up new chapters concerning your life and destiny. And if you wish to add, to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits, to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits. Rise up and walk again. It's a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons, to step into new chapters concerning your life and destiny, to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits. That's the first summary of this entire discourse. It's important for you to not just be excited, but to understand what God is doing here. Rise up and walk is a call that you have remained at a level spiritually, financially. You have remained at a level. There's still an old chapter lingering around your life and God is challenging you to rise to new horizons. For someone, rise up and walk can mean step into the next chapter of your calling. For someone, rise up and walk can mean make notable progress and advancement. Void of excuses. For someone, rise up and walk can mean press to know God at a deeper level. For someone, rise up and walk can mean contend for higher levels of grace. Whatever that means to you, the message tonight is rise up and walk. Do not give flimsy excuses again. You've prayed for too many sick people and there's nobody who is killed. Stop giving excuses. You have the power to see and you have the power to ask. Ask for the ancient parts. There are jars of this oil of healing loitering around the body of Christ. When you are hungry enough and even humble to be carried, one day you will meet Peter. One day you will meet John. And the day you meet them, don't ask for silver and gold. Ask for the ability to rise up and walk. Are we together? The first summary is that God is calling us. Hmm. As I prepared my notes, I took out time to pray for myself. And I said, Lord, thank you for what you have done in my life. But I'll be the first recipient of this message. Thank God for the level of the anointing you have brought me. But it's time for us to do business in deep waters. Rise up and walk. It's time to take nations. It's time to celebrate weightier testimonies. Manifestations of the hand of God. Are we together now? Yes. You are a man of God here. It's time to press for greater levels of accuracy. It's time to contend for the faith. It's time to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. Participate. Partner with God to stop men from doubting whether you are called or not. Tell yourself, I will never go for any meeting and afterwards, people are just escorting you out because you are a total waste of their time. As they share the grace, they have to apologize for bringing you because you came and said nonsense and wasted time. Summary number two. 
the mentality to rise up and walk is your own part your own responsibility while the ability to rise up and walk is God's part I'm summarizing this discussion now then I release that grace upon you I'm summarizing this discussion haven't shown you about nine observations by the Spirit as a light from this story summary number one is that to rise up and walk is a prophetic call it's a call to be tired of your he will supply your responsibility to labor in the spirit to submit yourself to to learning labor and the day of correcting your perception of having a higher most mentality while the ability to while you wait for the hand of god to be revealed in your life while you wait for the hand of god to be revealed in your life labor through the word to build the mentality that both attracts and preserves the miracle while you wait for the moment the period the time when the hand of god will be revealed like the man waited for when he will meet with peter or john or any representative of the power of god for that matter you have a responsibility to labor through the word labor through the word to build the mentality that can attract and preserve the miracle while you are waiting for the destiny helper to be used by god to help your finances buy the truth buy books listen to the sermons get the mentality that will make you not to waste 10 million make you not to waste 100 million it is not when the money arrives you start learning what to do with it i told you the mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk and that is not god's responsibility so the man was being kept at the beautiful gate as a clue by the spirit son it may not have been your your own making your own fault but keep learning how to look i place the beautiful gate before you to start helping you know that if you can focus on the beautiful gate you will be able to focus on peter and john when you see them and that when you learn to fasten your eyes on them then the power of god can flow through you while you wait for the day you will encounter a man of God to lay hands on you. Go and learn the things that make ministry work. Go and buy books from seasoned men and women of God that can teach you how to do ministry with integrity. While you are waiting for the day, the prophetic anointing, the apostolic anointing, the teaching grace will come. Learn on character. Learn on the fruit of the Spirit. While you are waiting to receive that impartation, God will not fast for you. God will not wake up and pray for you. You obtain grace and do the enlarging of your capacity. Leave the contact of Peter and John to God. There are too many crowds. It's only God who knows the one he has placed the anointing to help you rise up and walk. There are too many people. If you are to look for Peter and John by yourself, you will look for the wrong person because what you were even looking for was wrong. In every generation, there are lepers, people, cripples, may not be physical, but people who are victims of conditions beyond their control. And right now, for many of you, you have been helped by many. Could it be, ladies and gentlemen, that Koinonia has been your gate beautiful? Every week, helpers are bringing you. Helpers are bringing you. Could it be? That maybe I'm the one who is standing like that bronze gate you call beautiful. I may not have the power to heal you by myself. But don't worry. In this case, it may not even be Peter and John that will come. One day the king himself. Hmm. That power will flow through frail vessels. And cause you indeed to rise up and walk. Is someone learning? Pay very quick attention. 
Summary number three. You need to receive the summary to understand the full text. Every manifestation, I want you to listen and write this please, very quickly. Every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life should draw you closer to God, not away from God. Write this and I'll show you something in verse 9. Every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life, every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life should draw you closer to God and not away from Him. How true? Verse 9. Acts chapter 3, verse 9. Verse 8, my apologies. 8, 8, 8. Let's read it together. One, two, read. And he leaping stood and walked, watch this, and entered with them into the temple. Everybody say, entered with them. Yes. Hallelujah. He proved to God that his ability to rise up and walk was not a cause because it led him to enter the temple. Remember the story? They were going to pray, but they met a man who said, Lord, I want to pray, but I'm unclean. They will not allow me there. And God said, let me test if you really love me or you are just looking for a miracle. As soon as the man got healed, he did not have the time to run around town. The Bible says he entered into the temple. Many people on getting that miracle, they will forget God, forget Peter, forget John and be on their way back to the city. But not the certain man may not have a name, but he had a testimony that he loved God. Keep that scripture, please. The Bible says he entered with them. My God, when, my, when God opened my eyes to see this, I said, this is it. He entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. For him, it was not enough that he was healed. He said, I can't waste this moment. I've received something right now in a moment. I never imagined in my life that I would walk. I was grateful receiving arms, silver and gold. Now a miracle of miracles has happened in my life. I don't need to be carried again. I don't need to be supported again. How could I forget the God if the person who healed me was on his way to go and worship God? I would be stupid to ignore that person and the God he's going to worship. Maybe someday by worshiping him, I'll become a healer myself and be able to heal many people sitting at many beautiful gates. And the man went there. The third summary, every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life should draw you closer to God. Do you know that God is pained in his heart? I tell you sincerely, when believers receive of the abundant mercies of God and it draws them away from him, Many believers cry unto God at the point of need. They cry unto God, Lord, save me. Open doors for me. Give me this. Give me that. And when the miracles come, they forget God. Summary number four, very quickly. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life and destiny. Listen and write. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life and destiny, realize that you owe it to give God thanks, praise, and glory. A long read, but I'll take it again. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life, upon your destiny, realize that you owe it to give God thanks, Praise and glory. Verse 9. Realize whenever you receive from God for every manifestation of his hand on your life, every manifestation of your hand over your destiny, you owe it. It's a debt you must pay. You owe it to give God thanks. You owe it to give God praise. You owe it to give God glory. Read verse 9 as loud as you can. Ready? Read please. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. One more time. He was not silent. He was not careful. He announced it unashamedly. I am that leper 
the one you knew yesterday, the one you called Ichabod. I am that destiny, that outcast. It's still me. God can transform. And he was singing. He was walking. He was praising God. For every manifestation of the hand of God upon your life and destiny, realize, ladies and gentlemen, that you owe it to give God thanks, to give God praise, to give God glory. Summary number five. The fifth summary is found in verse 11 and 12. That is a lesson from Peter and John. You would think the entire lesson from the story stops at the man at Gates Beautiful. But there's something to learn from Peter and there's something to learn from John. Your learning say amen. amen. Watch this. The Bible says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. In fact, give us amplified. KJV or amplified. Amplified. Acts 3.11. Thank you. Now, while he still firmly clung to Peter and John, all the people in utmost amazement ran together and crowded around them in the covered porch. Solomon's porch now, verse 12. I like this, my God, my God, my God, my God. These are the kinds of things that will make me read one verse for days. Let's even go back to verse 11. Everybody says celebrity. Not after such a spectacular miracle. Say emoji. The Bible says the people stood in utmost amazement. That is a notable miracle. And the Bible says the crowd. Remember what they wanted to do at first. Pray out. Because of that miracle, nobody was talking prayer again. It was too spectacular. The attention shifted from prayer, from God, to those God used to perform the miracle. But the 11th or the, the final summary we learn in this discourse is found in 11 and 12. Now verse 12. And Peter, seeing it, what is the it? Seeing that the attention had shifted from God, the attention had shifted from prayer to him. He said, he answered the people, you men of Israel, why are you so surprised and wondering at this? Why do you keep staring at us as though by our own individual power or active piety, we had made this man able to walk? Can you speak like that? After such a miracle, Peter, in the midst of the crowd, the applauds, the beautiful name calling. He saw an opportunity to reveal Jesus. He said, I will not waste this. They can celebrate me and go back home and remain in their idolatry and religiosity. But I need to point them to the one who is the doer of this. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, even though you call me a superstar, hanging around me, coming around my church, coming around my conference, let me tell you the truth. A man can receive nothing except it is given unto him by the Lord. It takes a lot of humility and a deep knowledge of God, deep reverence for God to stand with your result in front of you and tell people, as much as you clap for me, let me point you to Jesus. I cannot end such a powerful miracle, such a discussion without showing you this. Why do you keep staring at us as though it were by our own power or might, this man has been able to walk. And if you read down to verse 18, we're not reading there for the sake of time, but he used every opportunity to reveal Jesus. He began to talk about Jesus. You see that now? Shared the whole story about Jesus and the people were open to receive. They couldn't deny the message. I like the apostles. Every opportunity they found was an opportunity for them to turn the attention of men. I confess to you that as a generation, we have failed in this area. We're a superstar generation with a passion to let men see us. Doesn't necessarily mean we are bad. It's just something we have to be aware of. When a man who was crippled from his mother's womb 
stands by your ministry, stands by your hand, stands by your apostleship, stands by your knowing God, stands from your crusade. Let me tell you the truth. It takes the fear of God and reverence for God that while the people are clapping and singing your songs and singing your praises, as you enjoy all the applauds, you must be like Peter. The Bible says when Peter saw it, he knew that this had gone out of proportion. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, even in the midst of this great result, I am not ashamed to confess to you that it is not by my power or the might of my hand. That could cost him his relevance. That could cost him his sense of influence, honor. But he would rather decrease for Jesus to increase. Did you hear what I said? He would rather decrease for Jesus to increase. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Every opportunity you find, every opportunity to be used by God to bring miracles, to bring healings, to bring liftings, to bring prosperity, to connect men to their destiny, to teach them the word, to raise a people for God. The moment God uses you mightily and the nations begin to celebrate you, remember the song that has become our anthem in this place, that until the nations see Jesus beyond Joshua Selman, that must become your from your life, that your intention is not to give him glory. You're just saying that as a religious cliche, so it does not look like you are stealing out God's glory. My passion has always been, and for the rest of my life will remain, this passionate desire to truly see the nation, see what God can do, first through men, but that it transfers glory back to him. That the nations praise God because you are alive. The nations will praise God because you are a preacher. Praise God because you are a businessman. Praise God for the prophetic upon your life. Praise God for the apostolic ministry. Undeniable, unusual dimensions of grace. That when you submit yourself to prayer and intercession. And God through your intercessory ministry open doors for people. As they celebrate you, the blessings will come to you. They will sow into your life. They will appreciate you. They will recommend you. That's your blessing for serving God. But make sure, make sure that in all your doing you will point men to him while you are pointing men to him people will say keep quiet if you point men to him what do you have now as your own share let me tell you the truth be satisfied when he's glorified through your life that is a noble reward very noble reward i'm going to be speaking prophetically over your life back to verse 6 amplified whilst you are seated lay your hands on your head in one minute and decree and declare it's time to rise up and walk acts chapter 3 and verse 6 something very heavy is coming on someone now the ability to rise up and walk can i have amplified classic is that possible if i can have amplified classic else just go back to kjv Please lay your hands and pray. Everyone. AMPC, you don't have that? If there's no AMPC, that's fine. Just. Shabbalah, sabre, saladeh, push Shabbat. It's time to rise up and walk. To rise up and walk in ministry. To rise up and walk new spiritual horizons faith for unusual dimensions faith for extraordinary dimensions faith for extraordinary exploits exploits that dumbfound principalities and powers that reveals god so mightily in the world of men someone take a minute to pray as you receive this impartation tonight Prasasiman takala barandos kavrias. Hallelujah. When you read verse 6 from Amplified Classic, it says, 
begin now to walk and go on walking. It says in the name of Jesus, begin now to walk and then go on walking. Begin now. That means you may not have started, but begin now to walk and then go on walking. Begin now to walk and then go on walking. Begin now to walk and then go on walking. Hallelujah. Rise up and walk can mean get back your prayer altar. Get back your passion for the word. It can mean rise to a new level. It can mean get to the more lands to conquer. Joshua chapter 13 and verse 1. Let me give you two scriptures and then I'll speak over your life. Quickly, Joshua chapter 13 and 1. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto them, listen Koinonia, Thou art old and stricken in age, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. There's no time to plateau in the spirit. The level of healing you have seen is not all there is. The level of the prophetic you have seen is not all there is. The level of the apostolic you have seen, in fact, is child's play compared to what is obtainable in the spirit. The level of wealth you have seen is not all there is to be seen. One more scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 2, 24 and 25. Very powerful scripture. It says, rise ye up. Take your journey and pass over river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sihon, the Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his land. Then he says, begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. I have given you, but begin to possess. Verse 25. 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heavens who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. I have given you, but begin to possess. I have given you that ministry. I have given you Abuja. I have given you Nigeria. I have given you Port Harcourt. I have given you Joss. I have given you Maiduguri. I have given you every sphere, but begin to possess it. A call to do more for the kingdom a call to rise to new horizons let me tell you this listen I've worked with God a bit and I have certain seasons in my life called defining moments physical calendar seasons where by my work with God God calls me it's like a solemn assembly I'm called by God and every time those seasons come exact seasons in the year three of them every year three major seasons that define moments in my life and in this apostolic and prophetic work and every time those seasons come and god calls me that that call that solemn assembly i know that it is a time for new wine it's a time for pruning and chastisement. It's a time to open other assignments. The major assignments in this ministry have come within those seasons. Whether it is Koinonia Abuja, Global Expansion, Sound of Revival, whatever it is. And so when those seasons come, I am usually very sensitive because I know it is time to rise up and walk. For someone, you may not have those seasons like me, but today now that you have heard that word, that is your own season. In ministry, God is saying, if you continue this way, you can't do much for the kingdom. Are we together? You can't preach incoherent, disoriented sermons. You are standing and just talking and people don't even understand what you are saying. It's time to rise for mastery. In fact, if you can, I recommend that you listen to the teachings, two sessions that we had in UK just a few months. Come up here, go to Koinonia Global and you get them there. It can add to this teaching that you have received. Come up here, two sessions, a morning session and a night session. I teach there 
two profound principles it's important to not plateau sometimes when i see people satisfied where they are satisfied with the level of the healing anointing satisfied with the level of their prophetic you know um administration satisfied with the apostolic no there is no plateauing for the believer so god is calling someone tonight that is time to rise up and walk rise up above challenges rise up above limitations cultural limitations territorial limitations for someone rise up above the grip of spirits they've held everybody around you you can't keep giving excuses not when light has come you have the ability to see you have the ability to ask in prayer you even have the humility to be carried and by the grace of god there are men who love you enough to carry you through that hurdle he says, by you I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. Stop giving excuses that the fence is too high. Why don't you rest in the everlasting arm of the king? The one who can lift you. Man of God, it's time to step into the new anointing. The excuses you have been given about the anointing is too flimsy. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. There is power to be obtained in this end time. The oil is still dripping, flowing to as many who are hungry, to as many who are thirsty, not to men of God, but to hungry people. The spirit of revelation is still flowing. It's like a river flowing from the throne to as many who are thirsty, come and drink, that you drink and from your belly will flow that river of living water do you know there are dimensions of healing that God still wants to bring and some to restore to the body of Christ there are apostolic dimensions our generation has not seen that God wants to trap in men and reveal again there are prophetic dimensions God wants to reveal there are dimensions of wealth and financial stewardship that God wants to bring We are going to pray whether you are sitting whether you are standing it does not matter can I give you one minute please cry to God cry I don't know how you are going to cry to God don't waste this it's an opportunity to rise up and walk go ahead and pray cry to God cry to God hi glory be to God Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hey, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Pray, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus I want you to receive this from the depth of your heart like fire from heaven right now upon as many who are hungry to receive this grace that is higher than silver and gold I stretch my hands as God has granted the grace to bring this truth to you I speak to someone the grace that causes men to rise up and walk receive it right now Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Higher spiritual dimensions. Receive it right now. Higher prophetic dimensions. Shapakatos kata. Ebratos esenemekata. Receive it right now. The spirit of revelation at a higher dimension. Receive it right now. The grace 
for prayer and supplication. Receive it right now. I activate your prophetic encounters at a frequency you have never seen. I speak to you spiritually rise up and walk financially rise up and walk in your career rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and run rise up and fly rise up and soar rise up and break limits rise up and break boundaries in the name of Jesus rise up and do what has never been done rise up and surpass ordinary standards in the mighty name of Jesus the spirit that comes into men and causes them to rise and to fly in destiny I have made that grace rest upon you May that unction rest upon you. May that increase in that anointing. Let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. And everything keeping you down. In spite of the fact that Peter and John. God's vessels. Are already within your vicinity. And yet there are things keeping you down. I don't care what they are. I crush them for your sake forever. I crush them for your sake forever. In the name of Jesus. And I declare over someone. We don't know how old that man was. We were not given the privilege to know how long his condition was. But one thing we know is that from a baby to an adult is at least 18 years when that man was met we do not see him carrying any semblance of a baby the bible will identify young men as young men like the rich young ruler but this man certainly was not a young man so it is safe to assume that from birth until the time was at least 18 years i don't know how long your challenges have lasted there is a word I want to introduce to your life is the word immediately. The Bible says immediately. You would think the longevity of the trouble, the calamity would make his healing be gradual. But the Bible says immediately. Another word for immediately is speedy manifestation. That is my prophetic word over you. Let there be speedy manifestations. Let there be speedy manifestations. Speedy manifestations of prophecy. Speedy manifestations of grace. Of favor. Of lifting. Of new levels. Of a new chapter. In the name of Jesus. Please hear me. For some of you, as you return, as you come for the miracle service, you are not just going to come to testify. You are going to come to draw those who will come and testify. Because I am not only standing as Peter and John. I am releasing upon you, now that you have arisen, in the name of Jesus, be Peter and John to someone else. I say it again, be Peter and John to a family. Be Peter and John to a business. Be Peter and John to a ministry. Agents of change, careers of the anointing, conduits of spiritual possibilities. In the name of Jesus. That as you come for the miracle service next week, for some of you, whole families will follow you. Listen, the Bible says the man who was healed clung to Peter. He went wherever Peter went in the name of Jesus. By reason of this grace, 
I forbid you from coming to the house of God alone. Your impact in the life of families will be too significant for them to watch you go to church alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Wave your hands. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Don't be tired of waving your hands. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of Kings. This is what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing everyone. The altar call, one announcement very quickly and we're done. Why do we make time for the altar call? Because this is our core mandate. To see many encounter Jesus. And because we believe in the fact that God adds daily as many as should be saved. Let me your attention please. You don't need any coercion. Jesus is calling you. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus. Or you need to make an, a surrender for the first time. It doesn't matter how far you've gone away from the cross. Now that you are in the house of God. Following online or you are in this place. Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. Wherever you are. Please, I'd like you to boldly take your bags, your Bibles, whatever you came to church with. Please step forward. Come right here before me. Give me the honor of leading you to this Jesus. The one Peter and John introduced to the people. Don't sit back when you know you should be here. Come. Let's celebrate them as they come. Where is that one person who needs to come to Jesus? That brother, that sister, that mother, that father. Koinonia, keep clapping. Jesus is drawing many to himself. For some of you, you are coming like that one leper to say thank you for the word I've heard. I want to make it right with you. Come. If you are coming, hurry up. We have just a minute for you. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Let's encourage them. God bless you. Bless you, my brother. Bless you, my sister. The Bible says, as many who will come, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. 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 Where are you from? Yes. Where are you coming from? Don't miss the miracle service next week. Hmm? I don't know you. Don't miss the miracle service next week. Please pay any price on that God. Make sure you are here. The Lord wants to change your story. You believe that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. There is one lady. You are supposed to join those who are in front here. I just saw this in my vision. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. I just saw one lady. This is what. I don't know where that lady is. But Jesus Christ is calling you. Don't be ashamed. Come. Come and stand. He's calling you. Lift your right hand, my dear brothers and sisters. God bless you as you come. Jesus is calling you. You see, when the Holy Spirit convicts you, listen, hold on. When the Holy Spirit convicts you, make sure you don't fight him. He always is for your best interest. Don't be rebellious in the house of God. Once you hear that nudging, that man of God is speaking to you. Obey and come. For every time you delay in your obedience, you recycle seasons of pain. Are we together? I want to thank you, all of you, my brothers and my sisters. Please lift your right hand high above your head. You're joining them. Do so quickly. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive your life into my spirit. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. I decree and declare that they are saved. And I declare that they walk in righteousness.
for the rest of their lives. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please look to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors waving the placard just to have a very quick word with you. And then you are back to your seats. Koinonia, let's honor them very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all for your patience. Just one announcement or two. First, um, the aesthetics department, those who are responsible for beautifying the house of God and for anything decor and aesthetics, they are open as a department for new members. All of you who are gifted and graced in that area, um, you want to be part of the department, please. You can move to the back, the PR stand. There will be an official there to guide you. Immediately we share the grace. Just take a minute or two. Be patient. Someone will attend to you. And then you can register your interest. They'll get your details and find a way of reaching you. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. This is announcing that next week is our miracle service for the month of May. Come on. Is this how you clap? Hallelujah. Let me tell you why I announce miracle services like this. One, so that you will know and prepare your spirit. Two, so that you will do the work of an evangelist. Nobody here should come with at least two or three people, with less than two or three people. You should be able to invite the people. It's not for the showmanship of, of crowd. God has blessed us beyond that level. It is to give people an opportunity. And for those who are not able to come on site, make sure they connect online you will literally change the destinies of nations as you connect them if this has blessed you and this ministry is lifting you make sure that many people become part of this we may be limited in terms of space you see but there are currently tens of thousands of people following this moment as i speak but there's still space for tens of thousands of others to connect and so every one of us do the work of an evangelist. Make sure that you invite as many people, connect to all our social media platforms, especially the broadcasts, not just of this service, but of any other one. Here are our platforms. Make sure you connect all our global expressions, Koinonia Global, Abuja, Zaria, UK, Canada, US. You can connect to the global platform and then also connect to the platform that is specific to your region so that you are able to follow, so that you can receive updates and together we keep growing as a great family. Have you been blessed tonight? Please rise up on your feet as we wrap up. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the hand of God rest upon you. Amen. I declare to you this prophetic word, rise up and walk, will be evident in your life. Amen. Next week is your turn to testify. Amen. You remain uh, blessed all through the week manifesting the hand of God in your life, your business, your place of work. You will not die. You will not go down. You will not fall. You will not fail. You remain victorious forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Together let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please greet someone on your way out. God bless you and see you next week. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.